after the way he's treated me. The most beastly thing I ever heard of, and I won't stand for it. The judge told him to pay, and I won't take a cent less. After all, he's offered you... A half a loaf. Well, he can keep it, and the cheese that goes with it. I'm used to luxury. He can blame himself for that. The half he's offered you is still a tidy monthly sum. I won't stand for it, do you hear? I won't stand for it. I'll send him to jail first. Sending him to jail, Sandra, is not going to help matters any. He still has money, you know. And in the alimony jail, he could buy all the bodily comforts he needs. That may be, Eddie. But he'll be in jail just the same. And that'll cramp his style. All right. Remember, it's your idea, not mine. Sheriff's office. Well, this looks like my last day of freedom, Dorothy. There you are. It's a terrible law, Mr. Hamilton. If it was made for women, you shouldn't complain. Now, about that private little plan of ours. Is it ready to launch? Yes, sir. You're to sell at present market prices, then I'm to secretly buy when the stock hits a new low. Exactly. Follow it out to the letter, Dorothy, while I'm sitting tight in the alimony jail. I'm sure the former Mrs. Hamilton will listen to reason when your favorite stock hits bottom. That's the purpose. You rang, sir? Rang? The, uh, the pantry indicator registered a tinkle, sir. No, I didn't ring. <laughs> Must have been a mouse nibbling on the wire. I'll set a trap for it. The drugs. You might bring me a highball. Make it strong. It may be my last. Highball, strong and lasting. Yes, sir. The stock will rise, of course. Yes, of course it will. I have entire control of the company, you know. But the success of my scheme depends upon you. You can rely on me. It hasn't taken me four years to find that out. You know, you're not like a woman at all, Dorothy. I mean, you're, well, you're dependable, reliable, like a man. No feminine nonsense. You understand business very well, Mr. Hamilton. You bet I do. When the proper time comes, jumbo mines will reach 80, perhaps 90. What's the matter with you, Grog? I, <laughs> I, uh, I'm afraid I have the upsy dupsies today, sir. Nervous about my trouble, huh? There you are, sir. Mr. Hamilton, might, uh, might I ask you a favor? What's on your mind, Grubbs? Well, uh, since you are, uh, uh, since you might leave rather unexpectedly, may I have uh, my check today instead of the end of the week? Uh, it might save me. Oh, yes, I certainly, Grubbs. Take care of that, Dorothy. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Thank you, miss. Well, what's the hurry about your check? Alimony, sir. You? <laughs> Following in your master's footsteps, oh, Groggs. <laughs> well, I, I tried not to mention it, sir. Well, you've kept out of jail at any rate. Mm -hmm. Only by the skin of my molars, if I might say so. <laughs> Groggs, what is your frank opinion of alimony? It's like paying for a dead horse, sir. <laughs> Jumbo platinum, jumbo platinum mine, jumbo platinum, jumbo platinum 80, 88, 90, jumbo platinum, Hudson 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, the old. Hello. Oh, it's you, is it? I don't want any excuses. All I want from you is one word. Did you get it? Uh, yes, Ducky, yes, I've got it. That is, I'm, I'm getting it, Ducky. Oh, don't Ducky me. I'm not a duck. I can't live on worms. I need money. I can't talk now. I'm in the bath. Oh, are you all wet, Ducky? <laughs> well, then you go on and play with your uh, boats and things, and don't you worry any longer, because I've got a scheme that'll make me thousands, and then you'll get your pound of flesh. Oh, what would I do with a pound of flesh? I told you, any time you want to get rid of me, 2,500 will do it. <laughs> Ducky, how can you yodel at a time like this? Oh, Mr. Brooks. Hiya, Dugan. 
What's the rumpus? The alimony club's in session. They just elected Chester Hamilton president. They ought to change their anthem to the battle cry of freedom. That's what the wives are singing. Here, try to imagine this is good. Say, Dugan, anything on the book against me taking a peek at the new specimens? No, step right in. The wife was kicking because I didn't kick in every week. Why, I couldn't even kick in to the cops who closed my speech. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sad stories? Sure, spill it, boys. Tell me your side of it, and I'll give you a break and some swell publicity. How about it, George? Want to say a few well-chosen words? Yes, I would. It's all wrong. My wife and I were getting along fine together at first, until some other people started making trouble. Some girlfriends of hers married men that were making more money than I do, because I couldn't give her fur coats and cars, things that they had. They said I wasn't any good. It isn't fair when a fellow does everything he can and then gets thrown in jail by a woman instead of getting another chance. It isn't fair. Anybody else want to discuss the psychology of love? Yes, Mr. President. Go on. My wife has got herself a bad case of circulation hips. And, and when I protest, she got me thrown in here. Uh, and now I got to pay her board and keep her boyfriend, too. <laughs> Mr. President, Mr. President, I want to make a speech. All right, Tony, go ahead. My Rosa, my Rosa, my beautiful Rosa. We are very, very happy together. When someday along comes a blonde dame and she says to my beautiful Rosa, she says, look, how you like to have no more babies, how you like to make uh, uh, no more cook, how you like to not wash the dishes, how you like to get the money every week, do nothing and make the goop outside. My beautiful Rosa says, yes, fine. Then uh, she sees her lawyer and then uh, Boom! And I, Antonio Moretio, finds himself in this again while his wife is outside making the coupe. What kind of a country this is? You know what I do with this blonde if I see her. I don't know what I do with this blonde if I see her. What's the matter with you? Hey. Say, do I look like his Rosa? Not to me, but you can never tell. Your broker's on the phone, Mr. Hamilton. <laughs> oh. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'm camping right on your tail, pal. You're wasting your time trailing me. Oh, I don't mind a little stroll. Better take it in the sunlight. Not until I find out who and when. Now, don't go blank on me. There's a wedding in the offing, and I want to know her name. It's a secret, I tell you. I'm holding out on everybody. Haven't even told my secretary the name of the girl I'm going to marry. Hello? Yeah. Just a minute. It's a little cramped here. Dugan, switch us to my private cell, will you? Hey, now, listen. Do I get an exclusive? You'll be best man when it happens. Oh, one thing more. Is she a blonde or a brunette? Hmm. Well, is she a white woman? Yes. Well, that's a good start, anyway. Take him down and throw him away. We can't have him staring down at us like that. After we're married. 
There goes that bell again. Okay. Well, 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 well. How is my little circus tent today, huh? Mm. My alimony. Give. All in good time, my little goose. All in good time. Mm. You haven't cleaned your bathtub lately. Give me my alimony and scram. Take it easy, my little titmouse. Take it easy. Behold, my brainchild of yesterday. What's that? A receipt for jumbo platinum mining stocks. For you, jumbo. <laughs> Which my super judgment tells me will rise to 80 or 90 points before sundown. What good does that do me? It gives you a cold cash settlement of $2,500. My little bowl of chili. Well, if it's all the same to you, I'll take this month's alimony in advance. Oh, you can't do that. Because I have invested that to buy this. Well, it better be good. Aha! Fear not, my little dromedary. What's that? Uh, I think it's the wind. I'll close the window. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll close the window. No, I'll close the window. I'll close the window. I'll, I'll, cl close the window. I'll close the window. I'll close the window. I am... I am... Uh, do you want to wrestle, Ducky? Believe it or not, I was just hanging a picture. Mr. Dugan and I are old friends. Yes, yes, uh, <coughs> evidently. Yes, uh, yes, Laura and I, I mean, Mrs. Grodz and I, used to go to school together. Oh, it's been going on that long, has it? Surely, Oswald, you're not insinuating. No, I'm not insinuating at all. I'm just trying to speak plainly. Jealous, Oswald. No, no, bilious. Of course, while we're not married, dear, I do think you should try and keep up the standard. No hard feelings, I hope. No, no, no. Go as far as you like. Go as far as you like. <clears throat> Only I think you might have spared my picture. Uh, Dugan, uh, I mean, Mr. Dugan, brought his picture to the house to show it. They must have gotten mixed up by Mr. Yes, well, <laughs> of course, mistakes will happen. <clears throat> Good night. Uh, just a minute. I want to see about that jumbo stock you told me about. <clears throat> oh. So your stock has taken a nosedive. <laughs> well, it's just temporary, my bell, just temporary. See, the bulls and the bears are playing house again, but <clears throat> everything will be hunky dory by sundown, sun, uh, sun up, by break, by. Good night. Why don't you send that guy to my school for husband? I'm giving him until sundown. Two thousand one hundred and twenty-two plus four. It's four dollars and thirty-three cents. Hello. Is that you, Grog? Did you see about Jumbo Mines in the last edition of the afternoon paper? Well, I, I wouldn't be too much alarmed about that because, uh, after all, it's only gone down fifteen points. Fifteen nothing. It's down thirty, and the market's closed. Down thirty. And the market's closed. Oh. Oh. What's the matter? Step on it. You've been two hours and you ain't half finished yet. <laughs> yes, sir. So you're the famous stock manipulator. Am I laughing? Ha, 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 So you're the famous picture hanger, am I? Screaming. <laughs> Shut up and get busy. Well, I'm doing the best I can. I've never met a sponge before until I met you. Shut your face. If you don't, you might want to use it sometime. And there won't be none that's shut. See? Your best friends will never tell you. Oh. Hello, Mr. Hamilton. Hello, Durgan. Grogs. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm doing... Why, Mr. Hamilton. Here we are together, sir. What are you doing here? Uh, the same reason that you are here. 
I tried to communicate with you, sir, but uh, that man said it was against the rules or something. What man? The man who hangs the pictures for my wife. What? Uh, Mr. Dugan. Oh. But why? Who put you in here? Lura. Yeah, Lura is my wife. You should have told me about this Lura before. Oh, sir, no words can describe Lura. Well, buck up, Groggs. I'll advance you the price of your freedom. Oh, thank you. But that's $2,500, sir. So why not? One of us in here is enough. After all, we're brothers under the skin, suffering from the same ailment, if not from the same woman. Oh, but really, sir, I... I, I Nonsense. Don't... You'll be out of here in an hour, Groggs. Take a vacation. Go to the seashore. Some place, any place. I shall need you for quite a while. A vacation to the seashore? Oh, I've always wanted to go to the seashore, sir. The splashing of the surf. Mm. The smell of the fish. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful. But I, I haven't the proper clothes for that sort of thing, sir. Take a suit or two of mine, and good luck. Oh, thank you. I, uh, thank you, sir. All right, Grog. <laughs> thank you 2,500 times, sir. Here's to the old tomato the long may she wave till we pay her born and wrong. What are you stalling for? Get down there and get to work. <laughs> I've resigned. I'm all through, Doogie, old boy. I'm all through. Yeah? Well, you haven't even started yet. <laughs> Mr. Hamilton has advanced me $2,500 to pay Lura off. $2,500 smacking? Uh-huh. What a vacation Lura and I will have. You're going on a vacation with my money? Sure. Me and your wife is just like this. Which one is my wife? Yes, darling. He's been here and gone. That's great. Did he give you that 2,500 berries his boss just gave him? 2,500? No, all he gave me was one month's alimony. What? One month's alimony? Why, that double crossing. What? What's the matter, dear? Matter? He's taking our vacation. Sir. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Give me something uh, with a lot of sunlight, lots of, uh, lots of view. Uh, would you like a bath, sir? I had one before I left. <laughs> <laughs> very good, sir. <laughs> you pardon my little fun. I've been very happy this afternoon. <laughs> By all means, a bath, a shower, a large sitting room, something spacious. I hate to be cramped. A suite would answer the purpose, sir. Yes, that would do very nicely. Would you sign, sir? Sir? Yes, sir. Yes. Pleasure. Front boy, show Sir Oswald Groggs to Suite 49. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Beach you have here, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, plenty of sand, uh, lots of water, eh, what? Oh, yes, indeed, sir. Hmm. I thought he was from London. I wonder if he can be the Sir Oswald Grog, the big game hunter. This way, sir. Quite a, quite a lovely bit of femininity in the lobby. 
Who was the lady that uh, scored the touchdown? Oh, that was Miss Van Zandt. She spends most of her time on the beach. Oh, indeed. You like the water, sir? Well, I can take it or leave it. seem to be getting larger. I... Oh, thank you, thank you. May I return your visiting card? Can you ever forgive me, Sir Alden? Oh, you know who I am, eh? Oh, of course. The girls haven't been talking about anything else since you arrived this afternoon. Oh. You know how girls are. Uh, uh, in a general way, yes. Um, would you care to join us? Well, I should be delighted. Thank you. Girls, this is Sir Arthur Brock. How do you do? How do you do? How do, you How, do? Do you do? How do you do? How do you do? What's your name? You know, Sir Oswald Grog, the great African game hunter. Oh. Uh, what? Well, you are the Sir Oswald Grog, aren't you? Oh, yes, 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 of course. Yes. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, shall we play Sir Oswald? Uh, with the ball, you mean? Yes, I'd love to, I'd love to. Uh, where do we, uh, how do we go back? Right there. Oh, yes. You play rugby at college? Oh, yes, yes, I play rugby. <laughs> like a demon. Oxford or Cambridge? Uh, uh, um, a little of both. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I'm so sorry. You're sorry? Yes, I, uh, I'm afraid I put my foot in it. Your foot? <laughs> Did you? I, I imagine she might have died too. <laughs> well, here we are. Here we are. It's my fifth, our fifth, uh, four, uh, first today. <laughs> I suppose that you've been all over the world, Sir Arthur. Oh yes, I've knocked about hither and yon, Baltimore, Buffalo, Syracuse, points east and west. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been interested in dark stuff. What is it like? Well, it's it's uh, it's all pretty dark. <laughs> Really true, Sir Oswald, that the animals in Africa grow to be so gigantic? <coughs> well, uh, uh, yes and no. No, my uncle says. That yeah, well, in that case, yes. <coughs> uh, have any of you ever been to Africa? No. You've never been to Africa. You look at your soft. Then I can speak with freedom. I've been told that the African safari is the most picturesque thing in the country. The, the safari. Oh yes, particularly the female safari. <coughs> oh my, you should see them during the mating season. How they skip around from crag to crag like a hardy shamrock, you know? Beautiful, really beautiful. <laughs> but I mean the safari, the African safari, the native caravan. Oh, the caravan, oh, the safari, the caravan. <laughs> I thought you meant the safari, the safari. The safari is the African chipmunk, you know, so-called, because it's so far from the nose to the uh, chipmunk. My uncle tells me that in Africa, the insects are far more to be feared than the greater animals. Your uncle is absolutely right. Oh, oh. I'm so sorry, Lake Sir Oswald. Don't let me interrupt you. No, 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 I'm, I, I'm glad you came, as a matter of fact. I, <clears throat> you sit down. Thank you. There you are. Sir Oswald has been telling us about the insect life in Africa. Oh, do go on, Sir Oswald. I'm vitally interested in bugs. <laughs> Never will I forget the day I was attacked by a herd of beetles. A herd of beetles? Oh, yes, yes. The African beetles sometimes grow to be as large as turkeys. <laughs> well, there I was standing on the plains all alone, when suddenly I heard the bloodless cry of the beetle. The beetle cry of the battle. There they were, 50 of them, galloping in my direction. Their tails lashing furiously. Tails? Yes, yes. Uh, they were the last ones. The tail ones. <coughs> With red, fiendish whiskers on, they came. I raised my swatter, my rifle. But not before I saw the whites of their eyes. And I fired. And 40 out of the 50 bit the dust. But there were 20 of them left. And what was I to do? I had no more bullets. The 10 bottles were up. The beetles were on me in an instant. It came to be a hand-to-hand -hand encounter. It was every beetle for himself. My bowie knife slashed the air to ribbons until only one was left. And there he lay wounded upon the ground, and I sneaked up to him. But he looked up at me with his cow-like eyes, and I didn't have the heart to kill him. What did you do? I took him home and nursed him back to health until one day he died, and I had him stuffed. Where is he now? My man is using him for a back scratcher.
feel as light as a bubble. <laughs> yes, you are improving. You've only stepped on my feet twice. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm so sorry again. <laughs> When I when I when I when I look into your eyes, I I, I forget to count. You know? Oh, you are a dear. Mm. Well, let's try it again. Yes. Yeah. Three, four, better. Yes, better. Oh no. no. <laughs> well, if you uh, if you can't look into my eyes and dance at the same time, uh, maybe we'd better um uh, well, sit down out here. Yes, if you insist. <laughs> well, yeah. I think it'd be better. <laughs> one of the happiest weeks of my life. Oh, how about Africa and the native women? Hmm. I'd rather be with you than a hundred native women, with or without their tom toms. <laughs> you mustn't. Mustn't what? You mustn't say things like that. <laughs> my dear no. Phyllis. And you mustn't do things like that. Forgive me, but I'm just a plain, blunt, old African game hunter. I've met life in the raw all my life. Until now, I've laughed at women. Yes. Yes, you're probably laughing at me, too. <laughs> no. How can one laugh when one has a bleeding heart? May I? <gasps> oh, sir. Oh, this is too much. It's nothing, it's nothing. Just a pebble from one of my diamond mines. Oh, lovely. But I couldn't accept it. Why not? Well, what would Father say? Is he a good judge of diamonds? <laughs> Don't you understand? I can't take it, Sir Oswald. Oh, do take it. It's just a trinket, a keepsake. Love will come toddling along in a day or so. Well, I have to show it to Father first. Oh, naturally, naturally. Where is your father? He's in China. Thanks. Well, now that you're out of jail, how does it feel to be an ex-convict? But don't get personal. I'm very sensitive about that. <laughs> Groggs is still registered at the hotel, but he hasn't been there for three days. Oh, thank you, Dorothy. Small girl, Dorothy. Of course she is. What about it? Oh, I just didn't think you'd noticed. Well, it looks like your stock failure gag worked. It certainly did. Sandra's on half rations. <laughs> <laughs> Say, listen, I was going to be best man. Now that you're free, when do you put on the chains again? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, as soon as that... Tomorrow, right here in this room. Everything quiet and simple. Oh, no, I hate quiet weddings. Why not have some paper caps and confetti? Oh, the bride wouldn't like that. What do you think of my judgment? Beautiful, isn't she? So sweet, innocent, untouched by life, like, like something out of a fairy story. You sure she's not something out of a snappy story? Hey, wait a oh, minute. That's all right. I was only kidding. She looks like a cream puff wrapped in cellophane. <laughs> Look at that little pet. I'd like to wipe that smile off her face. What are you so excited about? What difference does it make? I've been tricked, that's all. I let him cut my alimony so that he could give her the difference. A society dame with a baby stare. Let's have a look. <laughs> Isn't she as funny as that? That baby stare looks very familiar to me. Do you know that dame? Know her? Why, she used to buck the extra land in the movie studios. Her name's Fanny Malone. Keep going, baby. I'm listening. Of course, darling. Yes, it should be quiet. Oh, I hate ostentation. Then we run away if we can be alone and no one can find us. That's my idea exactly. Well, by the way, did you get the flowers I sent you? Yes, dear, and I love them. Roses especially. Oh, do you think so? Well, it'll only be a few hours. Goodbye, Sue. Yes, ma'am? Tell your mistress the Fuller Brush woman is here. I don't think we need it. it, no? A woman from your man's past. Well, who are you? Sandra. I tell fortunes and everything. Well, of all the nerve coming up here unannounced. Nerve? Yeah, I got that too. I had the man you're going to marry. Oh, I see. You're the ex. Right, the first time, sister. Send your shadow here for a spot of gin. You're going to need it. I never drink. You be going. Yes, Cigarette? I never smoke. Before I get through with you, baby, you're going to burn. 
You kindly state your business and go. Okay. Hamilton faked a Wall Street crash and cut my alimony in half. See? No, I don't see. Well, he cut my alimony in half just the same. And now that he's in the money, it's up to you to get him to put it back where it was. Well, how dare you suggest such a thing? How dare you even intimate that I should become a party to such a sordid scheme? Oh. Sit down, Fanny Malone. You know, the minute you came through that door, I said to myself, I said, Phyllis, there's a girl who holds plenty. I said to myself, I said, Phyllis, why don't you go by your right next step? I like the name of Fanny better. So old, an old-fashioned Fanny. You may be a great, big, lovely Phyllis to your boyfriend, but you're just plain old-fashioned Fanny Malone to me. That's what my first husband used to say. Where do you get your final decree from that bird? Oh, about three months. Hmm. You know, now that you brought the subject up, I'm, I'm terribly worried. You ever got a thing to worry about? Just get Chester to put my alimony back to where it was and I won't say a word. Your alimony is the first thing I'm going to bring up after we're married. Well, you needn't be in that much of a rush. What, what was the ground for your last divorce? <laughs> you caught me walking in my sleep. Oh. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm a... a, a I'm a... Somnambulist. Oh. That's nice work, too. If you can get it steady. What's wrong with walking in your sleep? Not a thing, nothing. If you keep right on walking. You hurt my feelings. Oh, I'm awfully sorry I wouldn't hurt your feelings for anything. Well, you did. Well, I certainly wouldn't. I apologize. I do. Well, that's all right. Sorry. That's all right. The trouble with men is they don't respect women. They try to take advantage. That's right. You know something? This is the best liver of worst I ever tasted. The story isn't bad either. Have you been married much? Not much. Quite often. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that a hot one? That's the best thing I ever done. Thanks a lot, Dorothy. You certainly have added a feminine touch to the decorations. I... I hope Miss Van Sant likes it. Of course she will. She'll like you, too. I'm sure you'll both be 
that happen. You bet we will. Wait till you see her, Dorothy. Then you'll understand how I've at last found the one woman for me. I'm glad you feel that way. Any girl could be happy with you. I... Yes, Judge. We're expecting you in 20 minutes. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, Dorothy, there she is. Phyllis, this is my secretary, Miss Blaine. I hope you'll be very happy, Miss Vance. Thank you. <laughs> Darling. But I have a bro myself, so I'm a little nervous. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. That's too bad. Well, of course, you just sit quietly here. I'll have Dorothy get you one right away. Dorothy? She knows the house better than I do. Now, what's the matter? Why are those lines in your pretty forehead? Well, I may be old-fashioned, but I think a man should have a man's secretary. <laughs> oh, forgive me, darling. Just that I'm so nervous. May I have that bromo now? Of course. And it's all going to be feeling better. I, uh, I hate executions, don't you? Oh, please. I can't. I understand, kid. It's okay. My <laughs> <laughs> hey, Groves! Groves, what on earth are you doing? I'm taking a shower, miss. Are you mad, Groggs? Yes, I'm mad. I'm mad as a hatter. What are you talking about? Love, treason, treachery. A woman. <laughs> a woman broke me like a butterfly on a wheel. Not so much noise. There's a wedding going on. A wedding? Where? In there. You mean to say there's a real wedding going on? You mean to say that Mr. Hamilton is marrying a woman? This ring I give thee in token and pledge of our constant faith and abiding love. By the authority vested in me by this sovereign state, I now pronounce you man and wife. Oh. Uh, air. Air. Give me air. Air. Uh. Well, you've done it again, old man. I wish you luck. Thanks. I'll get it. Happy? Ecstatically. Hello, Brooks. Hi, boy. Hi, boy. Well, I see you're here ahead of us. Hey, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mr. Hamilton doesn't want to see any reporter. Uh, hey, now, wait a minute. Well, I don't suppose there's any way to keep you out. Say, you couldn't keep us out with the chair. Uh, uh, How about a few words for the press, Mr. Hamilton? And a picture. Are you feeling better now? I'll never feel better. Who hit him? Nobody hit him. He fell. Yeah, I fell. I'll never stop falling. Mr. Brooks, that woman. Keep it out of the papers. I know something must be done, but do keep it out of the papers. That woman... Say, if we kept women out of the papers, we wouldn't have any news. <laughs> Mr. Brooks, she promised to marry me, and then she disappeared, and now she's married to him. Say, wait a minute. Who promised who and what? Oh, he's mad. He said so himself. No, no, I'm not mad. No, I've got proofs. I've got proofs. I'll show you. I'll show you. I've got some pictures of you here somewhere. Here, I've got, I've got some... Here. Here, here, here here's, here's some snapshots of her. There's some pictures of her. There she is. There's one of her writing. That's, that's me behind the horse. Oh, it can't be. It's a mistake. Funny thing about cameras, they never make mistakes. Oh, boy, here's everything but a fingerprint. No, and I've got better. I've got better than fingerprints. Wait, I'll show you. Oh, you won't print anything about this. You can't. Think of Mr. Hamilton. I am thinking. 
<laughs> and uh, what about your honeymoon, Mrs. Hamilton? We'll be going to the Riviera and then jaunt around the continent. Can I uh, see you for half a second? Excuse me, dear. Oh, Excuse sorry. me, boy. Yes, Certainly. Oh, yes. yes, we're sailing tonight and we're going to be gone for months. A girl only has a honeymoon once in her life. Uh, well, maybe twice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and she wants it to last a long time. You got that, boy? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> there you are, miss. You can see for yourself. Hand over those snapshot squads. Oh, Mr. Hamilton, sir. I, uh, if I had only known, I wouldn't have done it. Wait a minute. There they are. When were these taken? Last week. Well, what about it? Oh, your faith in women is pathetic. Am I supposed to have hysterics because Phyllis was photographed with this idiot on the beach? <clears throat> uh, we weren't on the beach all the time. What was that? I gave her all I had, sir, and she... What do you mean? What do you mean you gave her all you had? A diamond ring, $1,500. Her hotel bill, $700. Why, you... Now, you... Go ahead, sir. I wouldn't even feel it. Wait a minute. Rogers, have you got any proof of all this? Yes, sir, I have. Here you are. Here, here. Those are the... There's, those are the... Re re speech. Exhibit A. Exhibit B. Exhibit C. D, E, F. G-H-I. She tossed me aside like an old glove. Just a minute. Mr. Brooks, your paper. Thanks. Hello. Yeah, okay, shoot. No, no, no. No, kill the yarn. I got a better one coming up. Wait a minute. Come here. Get an earful of this private flash from the coast. Repeat that. Her name is plain Fanny Malone. And she's been tossed around like a beach ball all over Southern California. There must be some mistake. Yes, and you made it. What am I going to do? All right, will you listen to me for the first time in your life? I listen to anything. Now listen. Grogs, you're in on this too. Oh, sir, I've been in so much. Now get a load of this, the both of you. From now on, all you've got to do is follow orders. Now get this. This is my Paris address. Wherever I am, this will reach me. Yes, sir. Hurry up, darling. I'm afraid we're going to be late. Don't worry, dear. We have plenty of time. <laughs> Mr. Hamilton, home? You can't see him now. He's leaving for you. Yeah, that's why we came. Are you Chester Hamilton? I am. You're under arrest. What? We're from the Department of Justice. Well, what does this mean? We're taking him to Washington. Stock swindle. Federal investigation. I don't know what they're talking about. But this is our honeymoon. That'll have to wait. Chester. I don't know what this means. I'm innocent. Come on, Hamilton. Why, this is ridiculous. Yes, you can't take him away like this. I'm sorry, old man. We'll wait for you downstairs. Chester. I guess I'll have to go, dear. It'll be all right. Don't worry. I'll go down to headquarters and I'll be back in an hour or two. It'll be all right. Goodbye, dear. Stop. Chester. Chester. Brooks, how'd it work? Great. Did we do all right, Mr. Hamilton? You bet you did. Here's proof of it. Thanks. <laughs> well, here you are, boy. This is your home until further notice. Say, are you sure we can depend on Grog? Don't worry about Grogs. He'll come through when he's needed. Okay. Did you think I'd better put these things back in the bureau drawer? Yes, put them away. I reckon you got these shoes off a whole lot sooner than you expected, didn't you? <laughs> Did you hear something? You don't suppose there'd be ghosts around here, does you? Oh, nonsense. If you're scared, I'll go look. You. You. You followed me here. You came here to attack me. I should like to, but I'm controlling myself. You see how well I'm controlling myself? Well, what are you doing here? I came to borrow a book. I own this apartment. I uh, lease it furnished to Mr. Hamilton. 
Mrs. Hamilton. You. Oh. Oh, now I know why you tossed me aside. Now I know why you ran away and left me on the sand like a piece of kelp. Have you a pistol here? Yeah. Or a long, sharp knife? No. Don't be alarmed. I simply want to kill myself. Oh. Ah, this will do. Oh, oh no, stop. I can't stand it. I know you don't believe me, but it's true. My father literally dragged me from your side to marry his choice. Oh, please believe me, Sir Oswald. When I married Mr. Hamilton, I left my heart behind. You poor child. Blow. Thank you. I'm beginning to understand now. Your life was mapped out for you by an irate parent. Yes, that's true. I'm a very unhappy man. I'm going back to Africa, where the wild things understand me. Goodbye. Must you go? It's the only decent thing to do. I still have your ring. Yes, yes, I thought you did. Well, keep it. Keep the little pebble as a token of what might have been. Well, if you insist. And perhaps, who can tell, I may call again for another uh, <coughs> book. Who was it, Miss Phyllis? Him? I'm going to put him on ice and save him for a rainy day. What does he mean? We've still got each other. He hasn't got me. Who does he think he is? Now, don't get yourself all worked up, Miss Villa. You better lay down and take a rest. Oh, shut up. Get me some aspirin, a gin chaser. Only person I'll see is a doctor. Yes, sir. Oh, I, uh, I'm sorry to intrude, but may I exchange a book? I guess so, but I wouldn't like to disturb Miss Villa. She's feeling awfully bad. Oh, Sir Oswald. Oh, do come in. Uh, thank you. My dear Philly, you're not well. Oh, it's nothing. I had a teeny weeny headache, but it, it stopped at the sound of your voice. Oh, <laughs> I'll go to the apothecary and get you something. Oh, no, do stay, just for a moment. Come here and sit down. I have so many things to tell you. I. I'm not happy, Sir Oswald. I'm afraid I've made a mistake. When I married, I... I didn't know what it meant. And you know now. What am I going to do? May I offer some advice? I'll do anything you say, Sir Oswald. Then stick to him. It may seem hard. It hurts me more than it hurts you. But it's your duty. I don't want to do my duty. Phil. Sir Oswald, suppose we both forgot our duty. Suppose we did. Kiss me. Kiss me like you did. On the beach. Oh. We could go back to Africa. We could play in the jungle. We could start life all over again. What's that? It may be my husband. Your husband? What shall I do? Well, you've got to hide. Hide? Yes. Well, you've got to go someplace. Yes, go up there. Oh, darling. Dear. Thank heaven I have you. Surely it's not as bad as you wired. 
Oh, what a fool I've been. Is everything gone? Everything. I'm out on bail. Well, what are we going to do? I shall have to go back and face trial, of course. You'll wait for me, darling, I know. In a little flat on 3rd Avenue, I suppose. <coughs> What's that? Oh, it's just Edna. <coughs> Edna. Come out of there. So it's you. Hello, Hamilton, old fellow. I've just been reading the most interesting book. It's called Nellie Clover or Fun in a Hay Mow. What are you doing in my house? I, uh, dropped in to borrow from your shelf. Uh, yes, he just paid for a book. <laughs> He's probably read them all. I won't have Sir Oswald insulted. Insulted? I intend to choke him. Oh! You, oh. you duck. Oh. 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 Then I, I want the truth, do you hear? Yes. <laughs> That's so hard, sir. The truth, do you hear me? <laughs> now then, get out of this house. Get out! I practically left. <laughs> How dare you attempt to see him in the presence of Oswald? The whole thing is perfectly obvious. Well, if you feel that way, I won't stay in this house another minute. I do feel that way. It isn't enough that you should disgrace me. You have to humiliate me as well. Oh, I'm fed up for you, see. I'm getting out. I'm through. Edna, pack my things. You want a divorce, I suppose. Of course I do, in the quickest way I can get it. You know what that means? Certainly I'm no fool. You've got to give me grounds for an immediate divorce. You've got to give me evidence. You'll get your evidence. Everything is ready, Mr. Hamilton. Mr. Brooks has taken care of all the uh, details. I didn't know you were here yet. Come out when you're ready. I have a drink for you. Well, here I am. Dorothy, well, what are you doing here? Why didn't you tell me? Why, if I told you, you wouldn't have let me do it. I won't let you do it now. Go in and get dressed this minute. I won't. This is one time when I don't take your dictation, Mr. Hamilton. Wait till I get my hands on Brooks for this. I'm here and here I stay. Have you gone out of your mind? Yes, that's just what I've done. I've watched you do silly, stupid things for years, and I've never said a word. I've kept my head and I've been miserable. Oh, I think this is a terrible thing. But now I don't care. If someone has to be found here with you, it's going to be me. I'll never see you off tonight anyway. You don't mean that. You don't. Listen, go in and get your clothes on and get out of here before it's too late. I won't. You will, you've got to. Is that your husband, Mrs. Hamilton? That's him. Well, good night. Happy days. There's something about this that worries me. What is it? I just found it out. I don't know what to do about it. Do about what? You have violet eyes, haven't you? Mm hmm. Mm this makes Reggie a lord? Yep, Monaco and all. This is amazing. Yeah, I thought you'd be interested. I am. Sandra, you were built for a title. Thanks. Oh, uh, I just dropped in to show that to Reggie. Oh, uh, I'll do that. Yes, I thought you would. Mm. Oh, but on second thought, hadn't you better hear those wedding bells first? I know my stuff, Brooks. <laughs> oh, say, speaking of wedding bells, I hear the more recent Mrs. Hamilton is about to ring out again. Nice, fast work.
made of friends with Brooks. I told him to invite all the hungry chorus girls in town. I guess he did. <laughs> loving someone who is not in love with you. may be the judge. Hello, Judge. How are you? Come right in. Come right in. Make yourself at home. Judge, I can't tell you how glad we are to see you. Thank you, my young friend. Thank you. Now, you stick right here while I put some fire under the bride and groom. Fire? I beg your pardon. Oh, I mean, uh, stick around until I uh, drag out the victims. Well? How about look? You sure looks like an angel that's out to do us there plenty of good. Never mind the wisecrack. Hand me the bouquet. What's all the stall about? Mrs. Brooks, I can't go through this thing. Why not? Supposing Phyllis should find out that I was only a gentleman's gentleman. Well, now, how can she find that out unless you tell her? But supposing our first child was born with a whisk broom in his hand. <laughs> now, listen here, Grox. As I told you before, you don't have to go through with this. Hamilton only wanted you to help with the divorce. Mrs. Brooks, this whole affair has grown far beyond such horse play. The young lady and I haven't to. Well, we happen to love each other. What? Well, in that case, come on, let's get going. I never met you before, dearie, but you certainly look swell. Thanks. Well, just one, one more little drink. Okay, hey, Nix, 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 you're almost overboard now. <laughs> oh, you smell like a distillery. Oh, here, here, two on one of these. What are they? Mint lozenges. Right. Here, here, put a couple in your pocket. Okay, okay, all right. Well. Now, come on, hurry up, will you? The bride is already in waiting. Oh, that's, that's promising. <laughs> here, here, what's going on? Oh, I, I, hope, I hope I can make them scared. <laughs> Very, very straight. You're, 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 you're walking crooked. Stand them straight, will you? Where have you been? I got him here as soon as I could. I hear you've made me very happy. <laughs> next, next, it's the wrong one. She's over here. It's, oh, oh, I'm, I see. I'm so sorry, my dear. <laughs> The future looks very bright. You're certainly lit up. <laughs> Start off with your right foot. Haven't we met before? <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> You know, I can't help feeling sorry for poor old Groggs, just the same. Don't worry about Groggs, he's all right. I warned him not to go through with this wedding, but he's in love. Well, that's the reason. <laughs> as good as any. <laughs> <laughs> love, honor, and obey. To cleave unto him, and to forsake all others. The ring. <gasps> Where's the ring? Either of you know of any impediment why you may not lawfully be joined together in marriage, you now confess it. Now will you join hands? You take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife, to love, cherish, and protect her. Are you? Then place the ring on the bride's finger. The ring, not that, the ring. Oh, my. 
indigestion. I've got a suggestion. Alcohol will melt metal. Oh. Get him a drink. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Go get a doctor. Doctor says he's done liquor. It's all right. I'm so sorry. I don't mind. I, I, Hello, emergency hospital. Send an ambulance to Windward Towers right away. Hello, Brooks, old boy. Meet the Duchess. Oh, so that's why you're late. Stopped on the way to be married myself. Eh, Reggie? Well, you're just in time for the finish, if you uh, get what I mean. Oh, Benny Malone. I mean, uh, Phyllis Van, uh, Mrs. Whatever your name is. What's up? Nothing at all. Sir Oz will be himself any moment now. Sir Oswald, who, who, uh, you? Sir Oswald? <laughs> How do you get that way? He's Hamilton's man. Just plain grogs, the valet. <laughs> Oswald. Oswald. Oswald, is this true? I cannot tell a lie. Oh, oh my. Oh. Oh. Oh, there goes the bride. Now, here goes the groom. <laughs> <laughs> the grog is <they're> safe. <laughs> Wait till she comes, too. <laughs> While you're cackling, let's make it a good laugh, Duchess. What do you mean? There ain't no title. What? I put that person on the paper about Reggie's fortune. Why, you... Oh! Get there, Reggie. Emergency hospital? Make it three stretches. I think I should be going, my young friend. You seem to have far greater need for a doctor than a judge. Wait a minute. I promised you a job, and I'm going to see that you get it. Yes, but I... Phyllis. Phyllis, speak to me. Beat it. Well, that's speaking to me. <laughs> You, Dorothy Blaine, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. You, Chester Hamilton, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. Then place the ring on the bride's finger. Ring? Ring? You got the license? Have you got a ring? No, oh, I haven't got any ring. Have you got... Why, no. Uh, might I oblige, sir? 